The first thing, and this is a very important question, a very key question. Who do you believe owns the water in the valley? It's a public resource. It's under the, the auspices of the IAD Board of Directors. Are you surprised there seems to be some question about that, about the water ownership? Well, no, it's because uh, that's why you have attorneys. Uh, attorneys seem to always look at different angles and different opportunities, so you have that where uh, it, it might be a common sense solution, but yet there's different uh, perspectives that legal looks at, and they're mm -hmm. just trying to do what their client wants. Okay, okay. You know, the QSA has been in the news for years, but it's obviously in the news again now um, because of court rulings and obviously continued legal fights. Um, where do you stand on the QSA? Do you support it in its current form? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I supported it the first time, the second time, and I believe the third time. So I'm still there. Okay. Uh, my de declaration really didn't change my perspective on that. Um, if the if the QSA is ultimately uh, overturned and the IID lost QSA revenues, uh, how would you think IID should uh, conserve enough water to ensure they can conserve enough water to keep themselves within the yearly uh, federal allocation? Of 3.1? Yeah. Uh, well, our ag is market-driven, number one. It always has been. It's driven by the global markets. Uh, and so it would, be have, it would have to be a structure where the board considers all options as to how you manage that resource of 3.1 million acre feet. Mm -hmm. Understanding also that you have um, industry that's going to require some water. You have the cities that will start growing again slowly but surely. They'll need a little bit more water. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a pretty comprehensive package to ensure that there's water for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I believe the conservation methods that come from that We'll do just that. We'll use science and facts, not uh, emotions or other options. Okay. Talking about water, um, renewable energy projects use water. Uh, some use more than others. Um, but how would you, how do you feel a about renewable energy in the valley, and how would you actively encourage renewable energy firms to come here? Okay, you asked. Uh, I'll respond. Uh, there was a recent Supreme Court decision that said that the water was opportunate to the land, the ag land in our service area. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of baffled as to why geothermal is paying 400 plus dollars an acre foot when the geothermal is on ag land. Okay. Because if geothermal is an industry, for example, a part of renewables, farming is an industry also. So what makes them different? Okay, mm -hmm. I think we need to really research that first before we get into trying to create water for renewable energy because I just don't, I can't connect the dots. Okay, and this is a recent United States Supreme Court decision. I'm saying recent in the 70s, early 80s. Okay, water is opportunity to the land, which is agricultural land. If that's the fact, if that's the way it is, the law, then why is geothermal paying a lot more than the farmers are? So do you think geothermal should pay what the farmers pay, or should farmers pay a little more, they should be met in the middle, or do you not really have a firm stance on that? I believe that's where the board needs to just sit down and evaluate what is the law, number one, if it's written as such, and then why is there a difference between you know what the cities get, what geothermal gets, what renewables get, what ag get. And again, we're living within the confines of 3.1. All right. Um, do you think that power and water should be separated? No, it's a happy marriage. Okay. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. It's a marriage conceived in the 30s and it worked then, it still works today. Are you surprised that some people have kind of broached that subject about splitting them off? And what, do you have any idea what the motivations for that might be? Well, it's, it's a war adage, you divide and conquer. Uh, there's local people that like to see that for self-serving reasons, but for the general population of which we're elected at large, we need to protect that. Mm -hmm. And I'm for the IID as an institution as we had it in the 30s and the 20s as it is today and in the future. It works. You obviously have some experience 
Um, you understand how the district works. You understand the ins and outs and things. Tell people why uh, why they should vote for you. Why are you the right guy at this time for the IID? Thank you. I, I believe I'm the right candidate, the right individual. Uh, with the support of two other board members, we engineered the Stone and Webster study that said if the IID changes the way it does business, and you have to remember the board determines policy and procedure. So Stone and Webster said if the IID changes the way it does business, it would save the ratepayers $35 million a year for seven years. Okay. I'm about efficiency, about being cost effective. We had four independent SAP studies. Ultimately, the Bear Group said, said it probably the best. You bought a Rolls Royce when you needed a Ford or a Chevy. <clears throat> you know, we need to get back to common sense business practices. You know, just in two years, we're looking at a billion dollar pro uh, budget. Who does that represent? That's everybody. That's the rate pairs. And yet you have a community with the highest unemployment rate, lowest income per capita in California, <coughs> a growing senior citizen population that actually own their own home. Because us baby boomers, you know, we're not getting younger, but we're getting older and we own our own homes. And so that's a phenomenon that we have to make adjustments with. And yet the IID is an institution that had, it has the political wherewithal, it has all the tools you need to put the Imperial Valley into the future. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and just one, one final question that I wanted to ask. Um, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Brian Brady and the job he's doing? Okay. Uh, I, I had breakfast with Brian uh, early in January, and we had a really good um, conversation for breakfast. You know, Brian brought talent to the to the IID to the Valley. Uh, if we can rewind a little bit, I did support Charlie Hoskins. Hoskin, uh, he didn't make it, so there were you know they, the new board turned the page, wanted to start new, and so I believe what Brian saw, well, you know, Charlie went into that institution naked. Mm -hmm. So within time, Brian got hired, he brought in certain people to help. Okay, bring structure, bring, maybe the district lacked, but I still believe that we have a lot of talent here locally in the Valley, okay. But he brought this, these groups of individuals and helped structure the energy department, now they're doing some work on the water side, mm -hmm. to just make us a better institution, because we have to be, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be, for the rate payer. And so with Brian, he was shortlisted for the DWP job. They hired an intern, uh, general manager in the meantime. And so if Brian leaves us, and we wish him well, but it's his choice, okay, as far as I'm concerned, when he wants to leave. Mm -hmm. But yet what I would ask, and I did ask Brian, is who you can start a mentoring program. Because, again, we have a lot of local talent. They came back home with degrees, with experience. And so we have that mentoring program. We're, we're not going to go through a transition as the board did when they let go of Charlie and they dropped our credit rating. You know, that reaction, whatever took place, you know, nobody knows it was in closed session, but ultimately it cost us our credit rating where our ratepayers are paying a lot more money than we used to because of a, of a decision the board made. Okay. So we have to be careful on how we go through this. Okay. And so I'm all for what we have right now, but yet understanding they're, they're here short term. So we need to establish something with board consensus to move this thing forward for the benefit of the rate